Hey guys, it's Brian with Retired at 40. Today I wanna to do something a little bit different and I wanna revisit one of my favorite videos. And the reason this video is one of my favorite videos is it was making dog food uh, freeze dried for my dog. And we just recently lost him. He was my best friend. It's been a really tough blow on the family. Uh, we lost him a couple weeks ago to pancreatic cancer. But one thing I noticed as I was going through old photos and things like that is how cool YouTube is and that the opportunity that I get to do this and kind of document pieces and parts of my life so I want to be able to go back in a f at a future time and uh, see this video and this is a really good video uh, I do want to give you a couple updates from when I actually first recorded this video though uh, one we have dividers now this would be a perfect divider recipe uh, we did not have them back then and uh, two just make sure that you consult with your vet if you're gonna make dog food or pet food for your pet just to make sure that they're meeting the right nutritional needs of that specific breed or type of dog or whatever but first I want to do just a quick tribute to Murph. Uh, he was with us at our side 24-7 for 13 years, so uh, here it is. Do you want some dog food? You want some or not? Let's go. Come on, let's get some. Not that gross stuff. Hey guys, it's Brian with Retired at 40. I've been waiting a while to do some freeze-dried dog food. So freeze-dried dog food has been coming up a lot lately through the Facebook group. A handful of weeks ago, you couldn't find dog food or cat food or pet food in general. The store shelves were pretty much empty. So I've come up with a great balanced recipe for my dog and cat. Let's go make some freeze-dried dog food. So like I said, this is um, the recipe that I'm gonna use. This is actually my mother-in-law's recipe. You can go to the website balanceit.com and you can kind of tweak things here and there. Most people's main concern, I would guess, is gonna be the type of meats. I'm gonna use two pounds of beef, hamburger, and then six pounds of chicken. For the chicken, you're gonna want white and dark meat because you want some fat content. You want that higher dark meat fat content. Then you're gonna need uh, four pounds of rice. You can do white and brown rice. I'm gonna do all brown rice. A couple heads of broccoli. I'm gonna do anywhere from four to six uh, ears of corn. You can also use canned corn, obviously. I'm gonna do two pounds of pure pumpkin. I'm gonna do more pumpkin than um, sweet potatoes because I, don't, I only have six sweet potatoes. Uh, normally I would use 10 sweet potatoes, so I'm gonna do a little extra pumpkin this time. I'm gonna throw some green beans in there. You can do some other peas and then uh, other types of beans if you want. Six apples. You're gonna want three pounds of carrots. And then you're gonna need two dozen eggs. And I'm actually freeze drying six dozen eggs right now. So I ran out of eggs. I have to go to the store and get those. Uh, and then last thing you need is two containers of cottage cheese or yogurt, whichever you prefer. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add this beef. This is two pounds of ground beef. And I'm gonna do my beef and my chicken at the same time, and then I'm gonna cook my rice and my vegetables if I have extra. I'm gonna cook all of that in that water. And that way I'm kinda, of, I'm retaining as many of the vitamins as I can. And then I think I'm gonna add just about a cup of water. It doesn't usually take a whole lot in, a, in an instant pot. While we're waiting for that, I'm gonna take the ingredients that don't need cooked, which would be the pumpkin and the green beans, and I'm not sure really how this is all gonna fill these trays, so I think I'm gonna divide everything that I'm cooking into fours, and then I'll make four basically small batches, which won't really be that small. Another big thing that you're gonna wanna consider when you're freeze drying this is, does it freeze dry well? So you're probably wanna gonna keep your meats to something that you know will do well. You're not gonna wanna throw bacon in there. You're not going to want to throw like cheap, high fatty meats in there. So I'm going to try and stick to things that I know will freeze dry. Pumpkins, green beans, carrots, apples, sweet potatoes, corn. All that stuff does really well. 
broccoli. And that's also one of the reasons why I'm choosing chicken over more beef because beef tends to be higher fat. All right, next I'm gonna dice up my apples because I'm gonna throw them in the Vitamix along with anything else that's soft enough that I can put it in the Vitamix. You wanna keep your amount of food that you boil and cook to a minimum because you're gonna lose some of the vitamins and then you're also gonna lose a little bit of vitamins and nutrients when you freeze dry. My mother-in-law's dog eats this food exclusively and she says that it, it'll last about two weeks. So I wanna, just in comparison, I wanna do a, a total cost analysis of what this costs to make. So make sure you watch this video to the end, I'll do a total cost analysis um, for what a two week supply will cost you. So if you can help it, try and leave a few chunks in there. You don't wanna completely pulverize these. And while we're waiting for this to finish up, I'm gonna chop up some corn. So normally I would probably just do canned corn, but they had a, there was a sale on fresh corn and I figured fresh is always better than canned. So Murphy's getting the good stuff. So I also went ahead and diced up the broccoli and then I'm gonna do the carrots next. I think on the carrots, I'm just gonna take off the, the rough edges and then we'll cook them that way. My mother-in-law likes to bake these just to keep as much uh, nutrition in them as you can. And really, if you can do that with, with any of the vegetables, that would be the best. And then next I'm gonna do the same thing with the sweet potatoes. I feel like this is kind of like getting your kids to eat vegetables that they don't like the taste of. Cause there's no, there's no way that my dog would eat most of this stuff alone, but if it's mixed in with some chicken and beef flavored stuff, I'm thinking it's gonna disappear real quick. Okay, the sweet potatoes I'm gonna chunk because I want them to be able, I kinda wanna pulverize those as well as the carrots. I think everything else I'm probably just gonna keep in uh, bite-sized pieces. And then the puree stuff will kinda hold everything together uh, if it turns out the way I think it's gonna turn out. Let's go check out the meat and see how that's doing. All right, so this has been in for probably 25 or 30 minutes now. All right, all the meat looks like it's good and cooked now. So I think I'm gonna take the meat out, I'm gonna separate it, let it cool down, and then we're gonna use this broth and we're gonna cook the rice in that. Oh, something must smell good because someone showed up. He's a little camera shy. All right, so while we're waiting for that rice because it will take a while, we're gonna do our sweet potatoes, broccoli and carrots, and uh, I've got some broccoli and corn over here. Here's my pureed sweet potatoes. We're gonna do the same with the carrots. Next, I just diced up my broccoli. We're gonna add that in. And it looks like this is probably gonna be more than we can handle. <laughs> probably twice as much as I can handle in a medium freeze dryer, but we're, we're, we'll find out. So next, I'm gonna add in my rice, I'm gonna add in the cottage cheese, and then I'm gonna dice up my, uh, my meat into bite-sized pieces. I'm gonna throw it into a stand blender and I'm gonna mix it all, try and get everything as consistent as possible, and then we'll divvy it up between the four trays. Oh yeah, and don't forget your scrambled eggs. We need 20 scrambled eggs. Do 10 with the yolks and 10 just the egg whites. This looks better than my dinner tonight. All right, so I'm using brown rice and you're always gonna do a one to one ratio. So uh, four pounds of brown rice should be 12 cups. So I'm gonna add my my broth that I have from the meat, which is about five cups, which means I'll have to add three more cups of just plain old water. So I was really hesitant whether or not I would use the broth from the meat because it does have a, a pretty high fat or grease content, but I really just wanna do it just to see if it can be done because if it can be done, um, it's a huge win. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my lid on. Set my instant pot for 22 minutes and I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed. This is a whole lot of rice. It probably is gonna taste good for a dog too because it's absorbed in all that meat flavor. As I mentioned earlier, you probably want to cut, unless you have a lot of workspace and multiple trays, I would probably cut this recipe in half. You can see I haven't added the cottage cheese yet, I haven't added the rice, and I haven't added the eggs, and these trays are heaping. All right, last we've got our two dozen eggs. I'm gonna see if I can scramble two dozen eggs all at the same time. Give it the old college try. Well, I fit all of it from one tray in with the exception of the eggs because I'm waiting for them to finish up. Looks really good. 
Turned it, the consistency is great. Can you scramble 24 eggs at a time? Yes. Let's add the eggs in. That's the last ingredient. Get these babies mixed up. And finally get to freezing this stuff. So there's our finished product until it goes into the freeze dryer. I got full, four full trays and I got two of these big containers left. So I think if you have a medium size, I would say split that recipe in half unless you're gonna do a double batch. That was a ton of work and I dirtied pretty much every dish in the house. But it's not about me, it's about the dogs. Before we get too far, I'm gonna weigh these. We've got five pounds, nine ounces, five pounds, 10 ounces, five pounds, 13 ounces, and five pounds, 10 ounces. So that's pretty darn close. In goes the pet food. Hopefully we'll have happy pets soon. I'm so excited for this batch. It took 52 hours, and the recipe I gave you will actually fill eight trays uh, exactly. So I have four trays in here. I have four more that are ready to go. Looks real good. Okay, so our finished product is two pounds, 12 ounces, two pounds, 12 ounces, two pounds, 10 ounces, and two pounds, 12 ounces. So very consistent. That'll make it easy to reconstitute. It freeze dried excellent. It's exactly the way you want it. It's really nice and dry. It'll make it store really nice. It'll make it rehydrate really nice. I'm gonna take one tray and I'm gonna put it in one of these large size bags and that, know, that way I know exactly how much water needs to go into the whole thing. All right, I've got these all into four different bags, one for each tray. I'm gonna go ahead and seal these all in Mylar and then I left a little bit out for testing. He knows what's coming. <laughs> Murphy's been a good actor, so I'm gonna give him some extra. Normally, I think a dog his size would probably get um, just over a cup twice a day. And you've gotta think that this is probably a lot better on a, a dog's digestive system also. And I can hear him licking his chops over here, so it must smell good. Well, I guess that answers that question. He likes it! Murph, that only took you like 10 seconds to eat. Well, the dog food seems like it works really, really good. I'm not gonna lie, it's a ton of work to make it. Uh, I do think that that's, I think that, that, that double batch, I think that that would last probably two to three weeks, maybe a little bit more. If you made any of this dog food, let me know in the comments section. I'd love to hear your thoughts and your uh, if you've tweaked anything. So we know that it tastes good, which is really important, but how much is this gonna cost as opposed to buying this off the shelf? So I measured all eight of my bags and they're all right around 16 ounces or one pound, which works out really perfect because a one pound increment is how they sell the, the prepackaged stuff that you buy at the store. I did some quick research and freeze dried dog food is extremely expensive, um, especially considering how far it goes or I should say how far it doesn't go. So for a dog about Murphy's size, which is 60 plus pounds, you're only gonna get about four meals or four days worth of food out of that 16 ounce bag. Each bag on average is about 30 to $35, which means that each meal is seven to $8. Here's my grocery list of what I bought for my ingredients, so let's break it down. I totaled up my grocery bill and I came up with right around $84. That's using almost everything as fresh ingredients, even corn on the cob, like straight off the cob. Uh, this is high quality meat, it's not low quality. And I figured with two batches in the medium freeze dryer at about 50 hours, you've probably got six or seven dollars worth of electrical costs. So that means our total for eight 16 ounce bags is about $91. So that means that each bag is less than $12 in comparison to 30 to $35. It's pretty huge. It is a lot of work, but I think if you make them in big batches and you, uh, you, it's something that you already buy for your dog or you're thinking about changing your diet for your dog, it's, a, it's gonna be a good savings for you. The taste is really good. You know all the ingredients are fresh. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure you hit the like button until it turns blue. In the meantime, this is Retired at 40. Remember to live life simple, and we'll catch you next week.